universe we observe has precisely the properties we should expect if there is, at the bottom, no design, no purpose, nothing but blind, pitiless indifference. I don't know, I'm pretty satisfied with, with uh, the explanation of the evolutionists. Um, yes, I do believe we are descendant from animals. The evolution is obvious. Man was not created in God's image, God was created in man's image in order to address those things about which we were ignorant. I think part of the grand joke of it all is that, you know, before there was feet, there was flippers. Before there was lungs, there was gills. And, you know, it's all part of that process that uh, got us where we are today, gridlocked and angry. I sometimes wonder why anybody talks about anything else, because this is the most interesting topic there is. Where do we come from? How did we get here? What brought us into existence? What is our relationship to reality as a whole? You look at the incredible diversity and complexity of life, and inevitably the question arises, what brought all this into existence? Was it simply chance and necessity, undirected natural forces? Or is there something else going on? Is there a purpose, a plan, a design, a design due to an intelligent cause? It's really interesting to notice that the more we know about life and the more we know about biology, the more problems Darwinism has and the more design becomes apparent. We have not the slightest chance of a chemical evolutionary origin for even the simplest uh, of cells. The discovery of the information-bearing properties of DNA and RNA is a fundamental challenge to all materialistic theories of the origin of life. Neo-Darwinism and its associated theories of chemical evolution and the like will not be able to survive the biology of the information age, the biology of the 21st century. When I look at the evidence objectively, without ruling out the possibility of design, design just leaps up as the most likely explanation. And that's why I believe that it's true. We can't explain these systems by natural law. And if we're searching for truth, and they are in fact designed, if we have to be design engineers to understand them, then I say, what's the problem? You know, you go where the data leads you. And the implications, yeah, they have profound metaphysical implications, but so be it. For several centuries, we've been told that the universe does not have us in mind. That is, that we exist in a small speck of dust in a very large universe, and that the universe was not designed for beings like us. Our argument suggests something completely different. It suggests that the universe was intended, that the universe exists for a purpose. The laws of physics are balanced on a razor's edge for life to occur. What you have is a universe that is not only finely tuned for life to occur, but also has a beautiful, elegant mathematical structure and a structure such that we can discover that structure. There's something about the universe that can't be simply explained just by the impersonal forces of nature and atoms colliding with atoms. And so you have to reach for something beyond the universe to try to account for it. The founders of modern science, like Copernicus and Kepler and Galileo and Newton himself, believed that the universe was the product of a mind, that it was intelligible to beings like ourselves because the universe itself was the product of an intelligent being. I was trained in journalism and law to respond to truth. I had to take a step of faith in the same direction that that evidence is flowing. You don't have to commit intellectual suicide to come to the conclusion that there is an intelligent designer. Because today, science is pointing more directly and more powerfully toward a creator than any other time in the history of the world. 
Now you can unlock the mysteries of life and the universe with three award-winning DVDs. Unlocking the Mystery of Life, The Privileged Planet, and The Case for a Creator.